Well, here with us today is Guna, a researcher of local history from Austria. Guna will tell us a little bit more about resonance chambers in Austria today, a topic that many people don't even know about in Germany or in Austria. We've talked about it before, but today you're going to dive a little bit deeper into the topic. I'm already excited and I will now leave you alone so that you can talk in peace about this exciting topic. Gunnar, have fun and I'll talk to you when you are done with your lecture. Okay, many thanks, Danny. Yeah, so hello, everybody. My name is Gunnar Hiptmeier. I'm the founder of Tago Experience Research Team. And today I'm going to show you my current research about a resonance chamber here in Austria, an underground facility where we have many of them actually, but only a few of them look like the one you will see today. A little bit about myself, just quickly, uh, Tagu Experience Research Team uh, comes from my wife, this is Tanya, you can see here, and our little daughter Kadea, and me. So Tagu and our experiences is what we intend to share with you. Yo, let's just jump into the topic. This is a plan drawing about this specific underground facility, which is found below an Austrian farmhouse. This house was built around 1500 to 1600. I would say we, we don't really have documents to show exactly the date when this was built. And the chamber beneath this house was uh, discovered in 1988 by the uh, owners today, which are not part of the family who was building this house back then. They bought it around 1960 and they had no idea that this underground facility is uh, situated below their house. Uh, once they wanted to renew the floor in the living room, what you can see here on the plan on the upper part, this would be uh, the kitchen today. You see the basement, a little uh, cellar room, basement below the kitchen, and the lower part would be the living room. And here, where you can see this rectangular uh, drawing, here would be the, the door between the kitchen and the living room. And when they were building this floor here, there was nothing below because it's, like I said, an old house. So you have fundamental buildings for the walls, but nothing here. Here is only soil or lime uh, uh, clay floor. And they wanted to put some concrete, some isolation. And so they started cleaning this area and started putting little uh, wooden uh, sticks into the floor for the height of the concrete later. And during this work, this this part here on the floor collapsed. And this is how they found this underground facility. The floor didn't fall down very deep. It was just like collapsing 60, 70 centimeters deep. So uh, they could at least realize that there's something. They could see this here then on the walls that there are signs that this is artificial and uh, someone was digging this hole back in the past. We still don't really know how old these facilities here in Austria are. Uh, official researchers think that they were built in medieval times during the times when the land here, the uh, upper part of Austria was inhabited and like the first settlers seemingly were the ones building this underground facilities, uh, which we have below many of our farmhouses, sometimes on open fields and sometimes even in the forest. And yeah, I will show you now the chamber itself. For me, this, this lower part here with these niches on the side, uh, I call this a resonance chamber. And this is where I'm doing my research. And we will jump in a short video. Today, we can reach this chamber from the basement. They opened this little hole here. 
where you can see the, the construction of the vault actually from this little basement and you just they just took away some of the bricks so you can enter into this uh, little chamber system this system here contains three chambers where here in the center the bigger one would be the main chamber i will show you a specific picture later that you can get a little glimpse of how how big this actually is because it's <laughs> rather small i would say and from here, left and right, there would be two additional little chambers below, which are connected uh, via two little tubes, little tunnels leading down uh, from the inside of the main chamber. But you will see these things later on. Also in this video, I will show you one of these pieces. On the walls, you can see scratch marks, seemingly from the time when this was built but meanwhile i'm not so sure anymore if this is not like some different topic here we might have to consider that these walls inside were covered with uh clay or any any uh patina which was taken off maybe there were drawings and symbols back then which there's nothing left anymore so now here you can see one of these tubes leading down to one of the, the smaller chambers below. And in this case here, this is on the left side. When you remember the plan, which you will see again later, this would be the hole on the left side. If you're wondering what these cables are for, they were installed back in the 90s when this uh, chamber was discovered. They're not functioning anymore and we are not gonna uh, reuse them we are using different sources of light these candles were placed by myself just for this little video that it looks a little bit nice and i'm researching in this chamber now since several years actually but since i would say six months something like this i decided to really go deeper into this and I started making acoustic tests where you will hear some uh, examples later what's going on on acoustic level inside of this chamber. You can even uh, realize this immediately when you're inside by yourself and you you just talk. You will just talk very quietly because it's like an amplifier. Uh sounds are getting quite loud immediately and there's something going on with the frequencies the detected basic frequency we are dealing here with is 435 hertz so we know from other places of subterranean chambers sacred places or caves like this that we are mostly dealing with the frequency of 432 hertz in this case here, I'm not quite sure why this is, but we detected uh, by measurements that we are dealing with 435 hertz. This could be because the chamber is not uh, fully functioning anymore. There are parts missing. You can see this. They're broken off parts from the ceiling, from the sides. And therefore, the the interior, the inside is not fully original anymore the material of the walls actually is granite but it's not very hard anymore granite tends to soften when it's a little bit closer to the surface still underground we have more places like this where you can really scratch the walls with your fingers it's not that hard anymore but i think it was once and this would be the entrance from the inside and when we look down left and right there are little tunnels leading to the additional chambers left and right this rotten wood here is just a little it was a little pillar for making it easier to step down it's it's broken now we don't use it anymore you see an old light bulb which was used back in the 90s it's also not in use anymore. 
So this would be the the bigger of the additional chambers below. And here again, you could see the you, you can see the entrance to the system from the basement. And this would be a picture from inside out. So actually here in, in the middle is where this other picture from before was, was taken when you look inside here through this hole. And when you enter this, there is this shaft. This would be leading down here for one and a half meters and leading up to the basement of the, the house itself where it was discovered. And from here upwards, it's around two meters. So you could say we yeah, are six feet, something like this. And when this uh, facility was discovered, it was completely filled up with filling material. So they had they had to take out filling material from, from all the chambers and including this main shaft to the top, which raises many questions back to the time when this underground system was built. Uh, because when you think, uh, when you take the house away, the shaft here would lead to the surface of of the the uh, of the ground. It would be open towards the outside, and I would say that at least there was something to cover this long time before this house was built. Uh, there's a special research going on in Austria about these facilities and also the time when when they seemingly have been at least used the last time. And then we would be talking about 1560 or something. Uh, we already found documents, which is public published by Dr. Kusch, an Austrian researcher. He found documents in an archive in Vienna, which are talking about that the church actually is ordering that all these underground facilities have to be closed. And in addition, there is a document talking about that we have to stop trading with the people or creatures who are living underground. So this is very, very intriguing, very interesting topic. Uh, I don't share the opinion of the official researchers that these facilities are just around, let's say, 900 years old. To me, they look far older. The whole, the whole building style is, is not medieval building style, not even in the center of Europe, not here in Austria. It looks far more like other old ancient sites we know from all around the world, meanwhile. And this now would be the main chamber, which actually I call the resonance chamber. And I think that in this chamber, in the past, uh, they were working with sounds. We have these five niches here, these five chapters, which are carved into the wall in different sizes, maybe also not that perfect anymore, because even here, I think this could have been covered with with a plaster once which has been taken off but still you have acoustic properties something is really going on inside there with the sounds and you can hear this on some of the examples later and when we come to these examples i really highly recommend to use headphones when you're listening to this or at least a real good sound system with a subwoofer for the low frequencies because the main frequency you will hear is around 81 hertz. And uh, these systems, these sound systems from normal computers or even maybe cell phones, smartphones, they, they can't produce these uh, low frequencies. So I really recommend take headphones later, at least when we are listening to the sound examples. This stone plate here in the middle, in my opinion, I will just jump back quickly to this entrance, which is also not, not fully original anymore. But I think that this stone plate here once was used to close this entrance part here, you know, for the benefits of the resonance room inside. 
because here on the right side would be one of the holes leading down and the second one would be on the left side. So to maintain a real good resonance room, you would have to close the entrance. This is my opinion. We can't really try it like in original because the stone is far too small. You can see that here is broken off. Something is broken off here and even on the other side. Uh, these parts are totally missing. Maybe they have been taken out when they were uh, taking all the filling material out. We don't know this anymore. So this is a little wide angle picture, which makes it look even more impressive. Here on the wall, you can see also scratch marks. I would say they could be from the time when this was built. Uh, and here you can see where the shadow is again on the left and right side. This would be where these two tubes are leading downwards. Now, to point at the fact that this chamber is really quite small, this is my wife, Tanya, uh, because otherwise you have no comparison. And here, pictures like this, it looks far bigger than it actually is. This chamber has a height of 1 meter and 20 centimeters, and it's around 1 meter 50 wide. It's not perfectly uh, round here. So you, if you measure from here, you, you would have one meter 60. Uh, here, the, the distance is one meter 50. And yeah, therefore I placed Tanya inside that you can see and get an impression that actually this chamber is really, really pretty small. This would be now a view from the inside out. And you can imagine that even for taking pictures, it's not so easy inside because of the size. This again would be this entrance part here. And here you can see one of these uh, tubes leading down into the lower chambers. Here you can also see this, this part, which in my opinion was made to capture the sounds. Because when, whenever I do my testings, most of the time I'm, I'm sitting in this center area here where you could see the stone plate before and making sounds with my voice and with instruments partially. We just started and there's more, more stuff to come. But mainly I was working with my voice. And here in this area, we measured this 435 hertz basic frequency especially this tube here is vibrating in the tone E, which would be at 81 Hertz. Again, I show you here the plan that you get a little bit better impression what we are talking about. We have been visiting this main chamber now here with these five niches in the wall and these two, two tubes leading down into the chambers which are situated below. Like you, as you can see here, the chamber on the right side is even a little bit bigger than the one on the left side. And here would be a third tube leading upwards to where another chamber once was. It does not exist anymore. It was unfortunately destroyed when they were building this, this part of the house here. So, the people who built this house, they surely found or maybe even knew from before that this facility exists there. Because like I said, this main shaft is reaching up to the surface. I will try this with sound now. This is a little video I made for a friend of mine, Richard uh, Gabriel. It's already in English, so I will just let you listen to what I explained there. I hope you don't mind that I call his name from time to time because it was especially for him, but it is a very nice little explanation of the interior of this chamber. Yeah. Oh, it's in the same. 
even here i would recommend to use headphones because you can already hear special qualities of the sound inside of the chamber while even just while i'm talking okay i hope it's, i don't know the stuff is recording now it's not even easy with the lights here you see it's small it's not not really big so now here you can see again one of these uh niches and leading towards uh, this tube which is going downward to the lower chamber this would be the one on the right side even here you can see some of the scratch marks on the wall and yeah like i said before i think that they were taking off uh covering plaster from the inside because you know that in other cultures some of these facilities are really full of illustrations writings paintings on the walls on on the inside when you think about egypt uh, lots of sacred uh, carvings i would say old letters and here it seems they they took everything off even before they filled this facility up uh, completely this would be the tube on the other side the left side both tubes have around 40 centimeters in, in diameter and the depth would be 60 centimeters before they enter the lower chambers and they even get wider when they go down. So also this would be amplifying any kind of sounds you make here. And in my opinion, these bigger tubes here were made for the bass frequencies. Here you can see this, it's like 40 centimeters wide. It's also not perfectly round. It's here, they have a little uh, uh, corner, both actually of them, they are not perfectly round. I don't know, maybe this was necessary for the sound, for the properties, uh, or it was damaged in the years between. This would be now the entrance to the lower chamber on the right side, where we will have a little look inside. And even here, you can see the scratch marks again on the wall. And what's very interesting in this little chamber below is these three holes in the background. You will see better pictures a little later on. Uh, because what I said before in this in this short video for Richard, I have to uh, change my opinion already. Back then I thought this might be air shafts leading up to the surface. Meanwhile, I think that these holes uh, are connecting the chambers and that these holes which are leading through the whole walls of the chamber are responsible for the higher frequencies. Because like I said before, the bigger tubes here are for the base frequencies. And you can see in some of the broken parts of this chamber that there is lots of stuff going on behind the walls, which is not visible from here. This would be the lower part of this tube which is leading down from the resonance chamber above. And you can see it's getting wider. So it would be like, like uh, an amplifier for whatever sound you make in the upper chamber. On some parts, it even seems that there is still a rest of this patina of this plaster, which was on these walls, in my opinion. Even on this picture, you can see some of the scratch marks. And yeah, on the floor, you can see the rest of, could be the filling material. But in my opinion, it's really like, I think they were taking off this covering layer here. So this is what you can still find here. I will also clean this a little bit more. And I also found out that even these holes are filled up with some kind of filling material. So you have to make this manually 
because if you would just fill this facility up from this main shaft from the top, you would not be able to fill these chambers fully and even the holes in the walls. I'm also giving guided meditations meanwhile inside of these chambers to gain more insight into the possibilities, what you can do there with frequencies and guided meditation is one of the things I try with friends and my clients are always positioned in this uh, bigger lower chamber here and I always place them with the head towards these three holes. If I would place them the other way around, the base frequencies which are coming from uh, the top chamber would be far too loud. And I have to talk very quietly because you will hear this a little later. The sound uh, would be devastating. If I would be too loud or if I would have to cough in between or anything like this, make any louder sound, it would be very, very uncomfortable for the people inside this chamber. And this is not beneficial when you want to step into a meditative state. This again would be where the tube is leading uh, upward to the main chamber. And here would be this entrance area. There's also this other little chamber on the other side, but we will skip this for now. Here you have another look into the tube leading upwards here to the main chamber. Even here on the side, there's one of these little holes. It's really directly going into the structure. We will see a little bit more details, pic detail pictures later, uh, because these holes are really, really quite interesting. This here would be the top, uh, the, the bottom shaft of the tube on the left side and here again you can see one of these little holes coming out from the uh, solid structure itself. In my opinion it could also be that this material here is actually something like geopolymer concrete, some artificial uh, material because I'm still searching for an idea how, how you would be able to build holes like this. They are getting even more narrow when they are going deeper into the structure. And like you will see later on a little bit better, uh, they are like spiraling actually inside of these walls. So I don't really have an idea yet how this whole facility was, was built. Maybe it's it's cast you know, not, not carved out of solid rock. Again, this shaft leading down and have, it has a really nice big opening to release the base frequencies into the lower chamber. Now you can see a little test I made with the guitar and the guitar is tuned in 435 Hertz and I'm playing the E note because it resonates the best with this uh, tube. Here you can see that I'm taking out uh, rests of the filling material actually. So even the holes in the side were filled up with uh, filling material. We were Watching this part now, the right tube leading down, I also tried the same on the other side and I found out that this tube is resonating even a little lower and it's for my voice, it's even almost a little too low to make it resonate like I was able to do this here on the right side. What you can also hear in this uh, recording example it doesn't take much effort for me. Once this tube is really uh, vibrating it's, and you're, you're full in resonance, you don't need much power anymore. You don't need much output through your voice. There's another sample, uh, which is only audio file, where you can again hear this the quality of the sound inside and I'm, I'm, I'm really not using 
much power once this thing is really resonating and 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 vibrating. And here, for example, is one of these holes, and there will be even a better picture here. You can see that this is actually spiraling in into the wall. In this first part here, you can even reach inside with your hands, but from here on, it's getting too narrow. And immediately it's going to some directions. It's not straight, it's not leading anywhere straight. So yeah, it's not easy for me to imagine how you can build things like this. What I can imagine is, again, for acoustic properties, it it resembles parts of our ear, of the inside of our ear. You know, this is one of my thoughts, what these little tubes, which are leading into the structure, could be uh, responsible for, could have been used for, for a special type of frequency. And in my opinion, it would be the higher notes. Also here you can see in our bone structures, we have this tiny little uh, empty spaces and they are also first supporting the structure and second, there are some kind of uh, resonance room again inside of our ears. This is another one of these holes I can't even say how many of them are there. I counted 25 so far. And every time I find something new, the research is still going on. And uh, like I said, it's quite fresh. We don't have very much inside yet, but it's getting better and better. This would be, this would be the three holes in the lower chamber, which we've seen before. Yeah. And even when, when I'm talking here, here I'm talking German, but again, you can hear the resonating qualities of the even the lower chamber and the scratch marks on the wall. And this is one of the broken parts on the other side where you can see that there are tubes and 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 like almost like pipes leading through the whole structure. They are reaching to the other side. And also again, you can see they are filled with filling material, which was uh, was put there artificial. So manually, you have to fill up these side tunnels first. And then you can feel the feel the rest of the chamber. What's also very interesting is the huge amount of quartz inside of these walls. We're talking about granite, so you can imagine that uh, more than fifty percent of this uh, structure contains quartz. You know, there's more than fifty percent quartz all around in these walls. This is just another thought triggering point when we consider the qualities of quartz in regards of piezoelectric effect in in regards of his properties towards light and even sound we don't really know yet what these chambers once were used for for me they look really really old far older than medieval times they might be connected to what we know here as the Danube culture, which would be six, seven, eight thousand years before our time now, and where we find proof that this culture was also existing here in my area. There were artifacts found in some of these chambers. In this case here, we found a few uh, tools from the Neolithic period, but they were inside of the filling material. So questions over questions still. What's important for me now is to, to bring this topic a little bit on international level because we found out that there's not much known about any of these underground facilities which we have here in Austria and also in, in Bavaria in Germany. 
there are still also some in the Czech Republic and interestingly they are reaching uh, down to even France where we find similar structures but all these structures again interestingly are built in a uh, material which contains really nice amounts of quartz crystals and they are also situated on quartz veins so there are so many interesting parts in this research which we will have to take a closer look in the future now we started doing our first uh, acoustic tests we have our first results the story will go on the research will go on i will keep you updated this is just the first little insight in in, in what we are on to here i feel very lucky that i have the opportunity to to make my research inside of this chamber exclusively actually it's not open for public it's not open for uh, visitors to come as they wish i have exclusive rights to, to uh, continue with my research and this is very good for us in this case because i i have my peace i would say and the officials don't actually really care about what what i do here we will see what we find out in the future and like i said in the beginning we have many of these facilities and i will show you some more examples of chambers which might look like this one here most of these uh, other facilities are not accessible anymore so this is one of our problems we have some drawings from the times when they were discovered it was really nice work from many many people back then drawing all these nice plans and making some measurements most of these chambers you you can't enter anymore here you can see uh, that these chambers here for example are disconnected through uh, drywalls and the drywalls are far younger than the whole structure so they were they were placed in in the times between here you would have another of these rectangular shafts leading to the surface here's another one these things are all situated in my area even the the specifics here you see these these tubes leading down are in the same size almost in the same size like the ones i've showed you today here you would have another of these uh, maybe resonance chambers it's just very sad story for me that i can't enter these facilities anymore i can't go there and have a look here again in some parts it's closed with drywalls and yeah like i said before it seems that the catholic church ordered uh, the people to close these facilities in the 16th century. Here would be just another one. Here, these drawings, you can see, again, drywalls blocking off entrances to, to, to more shafts, to more tunnels. Here, even uh, making this seemingly also part of like a resonance chamber, making it smaller with a drywall we don't really know what these people even knew about these facilities back then when they started uh, filling them up destroying them partially some were really uh, closed up and never never seen again never talked about them again we have over 150 documented facilities alone in my area but there are only i would say 15 left which you can still visit a little reminder when you whenever you think about these plan drawings whenever you see them this is a 3d uh, model of one of these underground facilities it's uh, really sometimes going over different levels you see this would be again one of these main shafts which you can call an entrance shaft but yeah, maybe in the past things looked different. We don't know what was there on top. I'm living in an area where we have many very interesting stone structures on uh, the surface of the earth. Some of them look like 
from megalithic times, megalithic buildings. Some of them are like sacred places. It was parts of sacred places back in 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 the old days in Celtic cultures. Uh, Germanic tribes used some of these places. It's just also, unfortunately, we, we don't have any real delivered historical records, not, not written and also no real oral traditions telling us anything about these facilities and also about the structures on the surface. I will show you now a few more examples of planned drawings which were made by a, a, an Austrian priest and he published a book in 1902 where he was uh, really describing many, many, many of these underground facilities in Lower Austria. This is not directly my area, but if I compare the planned drawings which we have seen now and also the chamber in where I do my research. This just could be another of these resonance chambers. Here you would have three niches. In my case, it was like five niches. So in, in my chamber, we could even think about pentatonic scales. Here you have these tritonus uh, scales. We have other plan drawings showing different amount of these niches inside of the walls. Again, here, unfortunately, not accessible anymore. Still, we are very lucky that this guy published this book about his findings in 1902, because otherwise we wouldn't know anything about these most of these underground facilities. And when I was watching this book for the first time, and on the end you can see all these planned drawings, uh, this thought crossed my mind that some of these drawings look like technical drawings. Like this is some kind of technical device which is uh, depicted here. In this case, we would have another chamber which could function as some kind of resonance chamber. And in my opinion, it's possible that these systems were connected to each other. At least some of them are connected with tunnels. Some of them are connected because they are both situated on top of a quartz vein. And when when you consider working with sounds or electromagnetic energies or lights or vibrations, frequencies in any kind of way, there is the possibility that these chambers are connected on far more levels than we might think of today. Again, here in these plan drawings, these uh, black dots here are marking uh, tubes like you have seen before from my research, and they all have the same size. So people are guessing what these underground facilities were made for. And up to today, the, the main uh, ideas are storage places or hiding places. Uh, but to be honest, most of these facilities are far too small to use it for any of these things. And the quality of, of the air and the surrounding also doesn't imply that it's very good for storing food or anything. And it's at least it's not practical. And yeah, if you would consider you you build yourself a facility like this below your own old farmhouse for storing food, I would wonder if you would make it like this. You know, some of these connective tunnels you can see here, they are too far too narrow for us to go crawl through or anything. Most of these tunnels are only 50, maybe 60 centimeters wide. You, you can't actually move inside of these things. And again, some of these things really look like technical drawings. It's very, very, very intriguing research, very interesting topic. But these pictures here, I just show you that you get a little overview of what's going on in the underground of Austria. 
and I'm not researching in any of these underground facilities, but the chamber which you have seen on the beginning of my presentation. This book of Pater Lambert Karner is still available. It's a reprint, okay, not the best quality, but it's still available. And it's very interesting. Unfortunately, only available in German. But at least the pictures you can see here are very, very interesting. Here it would be uh, covering several levels because here would be uh, uh, the entrance part and these two two tubes would lead down and from this chamber the next tube would lead down again into a uh, part of the facility below and here on the ends you can see that uh, maybe it wasn't possible for him anymore to crawl any further and, and uh, depict what what's there some parts are closed up some parts like are damaged they fell uh, they are filled up anything we see drywall sometimes so still it's incredible to think about that this guy back then we're talking about 120 130 years in the past he was crawling into these systems head first with no headlights which we have today this 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 led lamps and stuff we use today he could also only use a candle which he could carry and sometimes really push just in front of him through these narrow tunnels. And he still managed to make these wonderful plan drawings. And this is what we still have today. Some of these facilities you can still go and visit, but most of them are hidden from the public. Most of them are not known anymore. What's also interesting, what you can see here, all these facilities, they look different. They, there are some similarities, but not the single facility looks like the other one. There's, these are all different systems. And for all of them, we actually don't have an idea what, what you can really use them for. <clears throat> On this page here, you can see underground facilities from only one village. So this is a small village in Lower Austria. The village is called Röschitz. Interestingly, here in this area, you can still visit most of these facilities. You can go there, you can have a look. Uh, but again, they look like some kind of technical drawings, some kind of technical devices. And yeah, I, I can just repeat again that we actually don't have an idea what you can use this for. There are no signs of, of water inside of any of these facilities. Most of the time, even the material wouldn't allow you to flood it with water because it could be damaged. Some of them are built inside of sandstone, uh, but mostly your yeah, granite, sandstone and other stone qualities which are really containing lots of quartz yo i'm coming to an end of my little overview of my research in the resonance chamber here in austria the story is going on we will investigate further we will make more acoustic tests with different instruments we are now thinking about flutes we are trying to play there with bone flutes overtone flutes but we will also uh, expand a little bit more on, on the vocal testings, overtone and throat singing inside of this chamber, make recordings, find out more about the frequencies and, yeah, like I said, also the meditative part, also the spiritual connection is very interesting, very intriguing and the story will go on and as you wish, I will keep you updated and for now, I say thanks for watching. Also, many thanks for Danny for giving me this opportunity, because here in Austria, I don't really have the chance to, to give any kind of presentation in English. So it's a good chance.
for me to present my research to the world. I'm very happy that I have the chance, the opportunity to do so, to be able to enter this cave and investigate. Yeah, you know, maybe some of you have some ideas, some helpful insights, anything you can always connect back to us, Tagu Experience. You can write me an email on tagu.experience at gmail.com if you have any questions. It would be nice. We really like to work together with people from all around the globe. We will see. We will see what's next. We will see what we'll find out next. I thank you again and I wish you a real nice, wonderful time. Take care and be safe. Goodbye.